Hi, everybody. We're back again. I have the great privilege of um, having an opportunity to have a conversation with the wonderful director, Courtney Montour, and her wonderful film, Mary Two Acts Early, I Am Indian Again. Um, so welcome, Courtney, and thank you so much for uh, participating in WIF this year and uh, sharing the story of this remarkable woman and women um, with us uh, at the festival. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, the, to start off, um, one, uh, what was the impulse for you uh, with the film? And two, what did it mean to you um, to, to tell this story? Yeah, I mean, for myself, I, I'm Mohawk from Gunawage, the same community as Mary Tuax early. And, um, you know, identity is, is something I focus a lot on in, in my documentary films. And I think it's something that's always challenged and questioned uh, just in general society in terms of indigenous identity. And so coming from the same community as Mary Tuax Early, uh, her name was one that I've always grown up knowing. And she's just such a pivotal figure in Canada, yet she's still not that known. Um, and so that's why it was important for me to, to make this film. You know, there's, she has been recognized in the past. Um, she received an honorary doctorate. Um, there's chapters in books. Uh, but this is the first film on her and really the, the beginning of it was uh, working with filmmaker Alanisa Bomswin and she mentored me on a past film and she had some audio recordings that she did with Mary uh, back in 1984 in Mary's home in Gunawage uh, over several months and they had sat around the kitchen table and they were friends and they just sat there and, and talked. So it's very, you know, it's very personal. It's very, it's very intimate. And uh, I think it's, it's something that makes the film so special and makes, makes it feel like Mary is here with us today. Did you um, experience uh, her um, in your process? Did you, how did, you know, when a film starts talking back to you, what was the time when you felt her voice speaking back to you? Not just the audio, but Mary herself. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it, it really started from, from the beginning. The first time that I sat with those, those audio recordings and, you know, I listened to them many times, but when I, the first time I got to the end of them, it was already, I felt, I felt so close to her. Like I, I was very emotional by the end of listening to it the first time. Um, I felt like I just knew her so much more. Like that experience was there because of the way, uh, the care that Alanise had put in to sit with her. Um, so, I mean, I felt that, you know, I felt that immediately. When you um, think about her, and the impact of the work that she did and at the time when she was doing it. How does that, um, how do you want that to be expressed not only to young indigenous women or indigenous women, but all, all women and, and then, you know, like you said, uh, the country to, to listen and to honor the things that she's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Mary Tuax early is, inspirational. Um, I mean, again, the changes that she made uh, as a Mohawk woman, as a First Nations woman, at a time when it was very difficult to step out and have a voice. You know, there's a moment in the film, the first time that she speaks out at the, the Royal Commission on the Status of Women uh, in Ottawa in 1968. And she mentions that nobody dared say anything about the Indian Act back then. Uh, so it was a very big move for her to do this. And the non-Indigenous women in the room, um, you can hear that they were unsure of how to take in what they were hearing, that, that these women are, are thrown out of their community. 
And one, one woman asks like, what are you gonna do next? And Mary says, you know, I, I don't know if we're gonna have a home and I mean it. And the women laughed, uh, I think at the same time because they couldn't comprehend that this was actually something that was happening. So again, Mary and, and all of the women that she worked with started a movement and that work continues today. Uh, there's still thousands of First Nations women um, waiting to be registered and recognized by the federal government for their Indian status. Um, sex discrimination is, is a, has been cited as a root cause of uh, violence against indigenous women in this country. Mm -hmm. um, so it's so important because these issues are ongoing to recognize the work that has started and was done by Mary and these women and the work that we still need to do. How did you decide how you wanted to shoot and then what was your sort of writing process and editing process with this material, with the new uh, work that you, you know, the, the new women that you shot, like how did you sort of um, create the narrative? Yeah, it was, it was really interesting because it was also the project, um, you know, transpired over four years. And so I don't think we would have, you know, the beautiful film that we have today if we didn't have that time. And I think time was also so important. But another thing that, that created this time was looking for archives. Um, there's, there's very few images and, and footage of Mary out there. And that's what's incredibly problematic and took a lot of time as well to look for these, to look for this footage. Um, her fight was so well documented at the time of, of, of the movement. But then when I would reach out to media or to our archival institutions, you know, it was like, me, sometimes the media was like, oh, we, we didn't keep that, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's, it was so frustrating um, that, that care wasn't there from the beginning from our institutions. Everyone covered it at the time. Right. But apparently, you know, overall to the country, it wasn't worth saving. Um, so part of the process was really looking for archives, going across the country, um, doing a call out, uh, the, the films produced by the National Film Board of Canada. And we did a few blog posts um, just looking for, for information. And from there, what it did was it, it connected me with, uh, with women, indigenous, non-indigenous across the country who just wanted to share stories of meeting Mary mm -hmm. or connecting me with someone else who might know something. So I think that was um, one of the most important parts of, of the process was seeing how much Mary still means to so many people mm -hmm. and going forward, making the film with this idea of, of supporting and, and caring for her, caring for Mary all the way through. So that was super important. And then I had the opportunity to connect with Nellie Carlson. Yeah, that's where I was going next. Yeah, yeah so she was one, one of the founders of Indian Rights for Indian Women and um, she lived in Edmonton and uh, she was Cree and she passed away uh, last September and she was 93 when she passed away. Um, and I spent so much time with, with Nellie and her family. Um, and, and one of the things, if, for those who've seen the film, Nellie, what we'd say is, is in a black box. So I filmed it just with a, you know, a dark, backdrop behind her um, because when I actually filmed with Nellie was in development stage. Um, we didn't even know if the film was going to be greenlit yet, but I knew it was so important to spend that time with her because we can't wait around until we reach production. Um, you know, what if anything could happen? Um, so that's why we filmed it in that way, because I wasn't sure yet how it could be used, but I knew Nellie and her words were so important 
as being one of the co-founders of this movement. Um, so that was, you know, that was important. And that's also part of the thinking of this film that we, we need to spend time, you know, with our elders. We need to protect and care for these archives um, because sometimes institutions won't do that for us. So there was a lot of thought and care uh, into doing that as well. And then the other part of the film was to gather around Mary's kitchen table at her home at Benawage um, because her daughter still lives there. Mm -hmm. And since the recordings were made there, since Mary's work started around the kitchen table, very grassroots style, it was like, we, we need to come there. And I wanted to make sure that people who are seeing um, this film for the first time know that the issue is ongoing. Um, so I brought, I gathered with Mary's son, Ed, uh, Jody Calibu Stonehouse and her daughter, Isabella. And, and Jody and Isabella, um, you know, represent many First Nations people in this country who have experienced uh, these issues and uh, through, through Mary's work, but don't necessarily know who she is. And so they learned about Mary for the first time through, through being involved in this film. And so we spent that time gathering in the home and listening to the recordings together. And for Ed, it was the first time that he had heard them as well. And so for him to be you know, sharing his knowledge with us, um, and he also passed away earlier this year. So it was, it was very difficult emotionally, you know, as a whole, but so important to have everyone involved. Everyone involved in this project is like an extended family to me. And I think that's, it's also part of who Mary is. Courtney, how do you feel as a, a filmmaker and as a woman, one being able to sort of archive and also to tell her story, but the, no, the idea, like you said at the very beginning that, you know, this was happening to Indigenous women, well, since the beginning of time, but that at, in this moment in time, women all over the country are um, experiencing uh, difficulties, domestic violence and, and inequities uh, uh, within, the, within the reserve system. How do you reconcile that as a filmmaker and what is your responsibility in the, in the teaching as a teaching opportunity? Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my mindset as a filmmaker uh, is always to, to share our indigenous stories, um, you know, our way working with communities. Um, I think that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, since people have been telling our stories from an outsider perspective for so long. So that's really how I go forward and to really work collectively. Like for this film, everyone who was involved um, got to see the film before it was finished in case there was anything that, that you know, they wanted to change or, or had an issue with. Um, everyone was part of the process. And I think that's what's important in filmmaking is that we don't just go into a community and leave and, and that's the end of it. Um, you know, I, I think that's what's, what's so important. And I always think, am, am I the best person to be making this film? Um, I think that's also really important. Even though we're both from Gunawage, we're both Mohawk, um, if I wasn't this passionate about Mary Two Acts Early, um, there would probably be somebody better to do it. So I think that's always important, you know, is your heart fully in it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, um, you know, as a settler uh, filmmaker, um, when I have the privilege of watching and, and learning and, and experiencing a film like yours, um, <clears throat> I wonder, uh, I, I wonder about many things, but for non-Indigenous audiences and for non-Indigenous women, what do you hope uh, that will be our teaching and what do you hope we take away from your film? 
Well, I mean, there, there's two, I guess, two things. I, I, I mean, speaking to, you know, all First Nations people who have experienced this, I, I made it first and, and foremost for, for them. Yeah. Um, because again, there's, there's such a disconnect at times that this history is hidden. And I want people to know that, that, you know, people loved you, people cared about you. There's women like Mary to X early and all of these women who continue to work, you know, for you and, and believe that you belong. Mm -hmm. um, and for the, the greater Canadian public, it's to acknowledge, uh, again, the work that, that women have done in this country, that First Nations women um, have contributed. Uh, I think that's, that's so important. And then again, the, the bigger issue is that um, this is ongoing. I mean, the federal government still determines who is First Nations, who is you know, Indian in this country. Uh, and it's a sexist, and racist way of determining, and that still exists. Um, even if the laws have changed and there's amendments, um, it still impacts First Nations women today. And I want people to know that, that this isn't something of the past. Mm -hmm. um, what are you working on um, currently? What, what's, the, what's the next project and what expect at the next festival? Yeah, I, I'm currently working uh, on a series called Pulse, uh, a 13 part series on uh, indigenous dance in, in Canada and it's being produced by Niche Media. And so each episode follows uh, one dancer um, and it's all about their, their style of dance plus we get to follow them in, in their life as well. Again, because I think it's so important to show the diversity in our indigenous, indigenous sorry, excuse me, indigenous cultures mm -hmm. um, across Canada, and that we have people uh, excelling in in every type of different field and every type of different dance, and I think that's that's important for people to see the diversity. Um, did you um, have a uh, someone? had asked me to ask you this. Um, and for the Indigenous students at Wingish Film Institute, how did you um, uh, get financed? How long did it take? And um, what was your shooting schedule? Like how long did it take you to shoot and how long did it take you to post your film? Mm -hmm. So uh, this film is produced by the National Film Board of Canada, 100%. Uh, um, so it's, it's funded by the NFB, uh, and then it was four years. So we started in 2017, uh, in development. And I also, uh, filmed with, with Nelly that, that same year. So that would be the first filming day. And then in 2019, uh, a whole two years later is when we filmed, uh, in Gunawage, um, over the weekend around the kitchen table. And then the following uh, March, 2020, we filmed um, me listening to the, the recordings. So the filming, filming really was over three years. <laughs> um, yeah. and, then, and then the process of um, uh, post-production also took a little bit longer because of COVID and, and working remotely at various times but we, we just finished the film um, this, this past spring. And, and, and the Mohawk version is being finished right now. And that was something that was so important to me to have a, a Mohawk version of the film um, and with, with speakers from our community. It, it's just gonna be so incredible to share that, that version once it's, it's out. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked? I mean, there's a million things because we only have 20 minutes, but that um, that you would like to share um, with the audience um, before we close today? Um, I mean, maybe just again, talking about the, the process of the film, um, throughout production, it was an all female crew, which was uh, something incredible again, to surround the film with. Uh, when we worked uh, in my community in Gunawage, um, I had hired a, a director trainee to, to mentor someone from the community. 
Uh, the production manager when we're in Gunawage was from the community, Angie Peppero Bombswin. Um, so uh, to me, it's always important to how can we engage more of the community when, when we're working on projects. And uh, the music was done by um, some incredible com uh, composers, Alaska B uh, and Ange Loft. And An Ange Loft is from my community as well. So again, I think that it brings something extra um, to the story. And uh, Melody McIver um, worked on the music as well with, with the viola. So bringing in those uh, extra voices and support was, was really important to me. And for those who've seen the film, um, we have some super eight footage. So all of the, the old, you see footage of a community and that that comes from my community and it was it was shot in the 60s and 70s from from someone in my community uh and i think it's it's priceless to have that um you know i hope people can can check with their own communities to see who has things like that and can we digitize them and and save them because it's so so important um when i make films or, or, or documentaries, I find that, you know, people, people recognize the places you're filming. So you can't just use stock footage, you know? Um, it, it adds something so much more when it is of the actual place. And I think that's, that's always important again, to just add as much um, support of, of the community that you're, you're in and filming with. That's a, it's a really a, a great way, a great way to, to end our conversation. But I want to ask just one thing, you know, we hear over and over again, oh, um, they don't have experience or we, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, they need more experience or people uh, haven't had the opportunity. So, but what you're saying is that that's not, it's providing the opportunity. So it's providing the opportunity of inclusion and collaboration within the community that you're working. Yeah, yeah, it's so important. Um, well, I thank you very much for speaking with us today and also for your film. It's a very important film. It's beautifully realized and, uh, and I, I hope everybody in Canada has a chance to see it. So congratulations and thank you so much for being a part of the festival and, and for speaking with me today. Yeah.